Everyone, this is three questions with Greg Bagby. Music. All right. All right. I know I have known Greg for I don't know like how long I've known you. It's it's been a while, right? But it's kind of a blur because I've just known you through social media. I met I remember actually meeting you in a keynote at a conference in Tennessee. Uh, you are beloved yeah. there, by the way. Oh, why thank you. And right? you are beloved all over, George. <laughs> Stop it. This is the this is the great this is the great podcast, not me. Okay, so yeah, like I uh, I know you have incredible influence. One of the things that I and we'll get more into this podcast. One of the things I really appreciate about you, Greg, is um, you just everyone just see. I, I don't know, maybe I don't want to say this, but everyone seems to love you. You just are such a positive person. You bring people together, and I just I just see just people just really look up to you because of all that you do not only in your own school district, but also, you know, with other people. So it's, it's, I, I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today. Why, George, thank you. That warms my heart. It really does. <laughs> no, it, are, really, I'm like, wow, thanks. I, I yeah. don't think of myself that way. I just like to, well, I, why be negative? It's a choice to be positive, And I choose to mm -hmm. share positivity. Uh, I was an elementary school principal for 10 years. So I had to be, I had to show up every single day on because i wanted those right. kids to be on because yeah i i knew what some of those kids were dealing with on a daily basis i knew that this kid saw this kids well it was horrible saw horrible things at home and right. i didn't want them to have to deal with horrible things at school so that's why i tried to be as positive there as as, as positive on social media and positive even at the conference when i'm running to george <laughs> stop it well, hey, I, I, I appreciate you. So um, I, I know not like, and I, I don't want to like downplay. Not only are you super positive and bring people <laughs> together, but you're very visionary in what you do. And I think that both of those things are really important because you can be really great with relationships. But if you actually don't know anything about education, then it doesn't <laughs> doesn't necessarily yeah. help you move forward. Right. So I, I, I yeah, think. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, um, there's a Covey thing that talks about confidence and competence that you actually have to have, um, both and competence is not just about what you know, but your character as well. So I, I really appreciate you. But before we get into the longer podcast, talking a little bit about the work that you do, I do want to know about your inspiration. Some of the people that have inspired you, uh, in your path, uh, as an educator. So when you think of a teacher who really inspired you in your career, whether that's as a student, whether as an administrator, who's someone you think of and why? Uh, I immediately think of Miss Ramser. Uh, she was my analytic geometry and trigonometry teacher in high school. Uh, because of her, I wanted to teach math. Um, I know it's kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> when I got to college, I was like, I'm either going to teach math or music. And thankfully, music won out. Uh, my music teacher was pretty good too, but Miss Ramser, she touched my heart. She was um, one of those. She had a quote of the day every single day on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, she was just this energetic teacher. I had it for like algebra two and yeah, I had it for crazy classes. And I didn't even, I wasn't a math guy as folks say, you can't say anymore, right. but, um, but I enjoyed her class so much. Uh, I remember my last semester, someone stole my calculator. This was back in the 80s. So the calculator was like $500. Okay, not $500. Calculator was right. a lot of money. Right. And Adjusted she, for inflation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and she said, Greg, um, you may want to drop this class because there's no way that you're going to be able to pass this class without a calculator. And I said, no, I want to stay in here because... I enjoy being here with you. And she's like, oh, Greg, that's nice. She gave me a D. Yes, she gave me a D because <laughs> I could not do half the problems without a calculator. And right. the only calculator that the school issued her was a monochrome old uh, uh, Manila TI 85 from the early 70s or something. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so Miss Ramser, she was phenomenal. She had great relations with all of her students. Uh, she loved you if you were the smartest kid or if you were the not so smartest kid like myself. Uh, and she just she was willing to work with me and work with any student. And it's one of those things that I thought, wow, if I could be a teacher half as good as her, I, I think I'll be doing something. All right. Well, shout out to Miss Ramser. There we go. I'll shout out button for that. The uh, what what is actually interesting and I like this is kind of rare is that you talked about a teacher that really inspired you that also didn't give you a great mark. Right. And like 
not that you like you know you said you struggle with it and stuff like that too and a lot of times the like we look at success as how you did grade you know grade wise in those classrooms but in reality you saw you actually saw the success that happened just in spite of the grades in that process which i think find really interesting and it shows how the teacher's impact goes beyond just the score yes um it, it was what like i said it was just the way that of course they say they'll never remember what you taught them but they'll always remember right. the way you made them feel yeah that's that's totally true. So I remember that I didn't learn anything in that class the last semester, but <laughs> <laughs> she still made me feel like a champion. Amazing. Well, That's every nice. every Friday on the quiz, she asked her bonus question was always, what's one of the quotes of the week? What was the quote of the day for the week? And if I, if you can remember a quote, you got at least a couple of points. So yeah. I, I sketched by that didn't equate to a D, but it still gave me. <laughs> you got, you just bumped it made me there. happy. Yes, I, yes. I love that. Well, hey, that, that that's I, I love that. And so now you said you're an uh, an administrator for you know uh, over a decade. So I know that you you work in central office now. So you have worked with a lot of administrators. You've been one yourself. So when you actually think about an administrator who really inspired you, uh, who's someone that comes to your mind right away? Wow. So uh, one person. Her name is Karen Hollis. Uh, Karen Hollis. When I first became an administrator, she was also an administrator in the district. Uh, she moved up the ranks and became my supervisor. Mm -hmm. And as my supervisor, she watched over me and did all the things. Uh, I was one of those principals that, okay, so maybe I got a bad mark in some areas, like turning things in on time. I was the world's worst at, and I, and I knew this, turning in field trip reports on time because my mm -hmm. teachers knew that I would do all that I can to make sure that all the kids possible could go. So I would wait to the very last minute. And then if I still didn't have some of the kids with their permission slips, I would hold off and wait until I got like the kids that really needed to go on those for uh, field trips, got their permission slips in. And then I would call Karen and say, this is well, after her being a principal, I would call her and say, Hey, um, I know it's late. I, I know I'm going to get marked down for this, but could you please sign off and let the kids go on this trip for whatever? And she would. She always said, Greg, you know, I have to. And I was like, yeah, I know. It's OK. But then she moved back into a role. Then she retired <laughs> and had to come back as a print. Well, she didn't have to. Uh, the district asked her to come back for a principalship at an elementary school, one of mm -hmm. the largest in the district because of some issues there. Uh, she put, got into that school and she was phenomenal, of course. Uh, one of my great teachers that I brought, I hired, and she was a phenomenal teacher, and I, I didn't do much. She was already brilliant when she mm -hmm. came to me, but she ended up working with Karen as her assistant principal, and uh, they were just a dynamic duo at this elementary school, so much so that when they needed a principal at the high school that it fed into, uh, they asked Karen to go to the high school, and mm -hmm. she said, yes, I'll go to the high school, so this lady, she's when I met her, she was elementary, all elementary all the time. And then she became the elementary supervisor and then she retired and they pulled her back in elementary. And now she's a high school principal and she's knocking the roof off. They're doing amazing things um, because she just knows how to lead people and work with people. And um, I tried to follow a lot of what she did when she mm -hmm. was a principal, uh, making sure that, well, I think she was one of the ones that talked about, okay, so you have, what's your percentage of on grade reading and all, and all that? And I think, yeah, okay, so we have 30% on or above. And then and she was like, wait a minute. So you have 30% on or above. You know, the the other folks that you didn't talk about, that 70%, they all have names. You need to know their names. Right. You need to know their names because you need to move those students. Right. And it was one of those things like she made me see that, I was making sure that those numbers that we are always pushing around uh, right. had names and bodies and emotions. And I needed to work as hard as I could for those that made it as well as those that didn't make the cut, so to speak. Well, so, it's actually kind of interesting how the, your two stories actually connect to one another because you talk about, uh, sorry, is it Miss, what was it? Karen oh. Hollis. Karen Hollis. Well, Karen, well, first of all, Karen Hollis, there, 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 shout out. But your your teacher, what was the teacher's name? I can't remember. Is it Miss Ramser? Janet Ramser. Janet Ramser. And it's kind of interesting because 
you said you struggled, but you like really brought you and and now you're getting kind of the same, you know, uh, advice from Karen. And that that's absolutely kind of amazing that connection. And like one of the things that um, I've always challenged is that people will say like, hey, we're using the strategy and it works for like 90% of our kids. And we're like pumped about it. I'm like, what are you doing for that 10%? Like what, yes. what, what are you doing to ensure, right? Don't just be pumped that you got like a certain benchmark. We still actually have kids that are struggling here and just, you know, it, like, it's like the 90% makes us feel good, but what does it do for the 10? And I think exactly. that that's part of it too. So I, I, I really appreciate that story. And so I know you've had a ton of learning in your career. You still like very reflective, obviously in your answers that you're sharing right now. So when you actually go back to your first year of teaching, if you could talk to, you know, first year teacher, Greg, what advice would you give to yourself and why? Uh, I would tell myself that, <laughs> Well, I think I already figured out after the first week, I realized that the work was hard, but uh, mm -hmm. the work is hard. The work is worth it. And don't listen to the haters, even though right. haters wasn't a thing my first year. They, yeah, <laughs> actually, did, yeah. We, we didn't yeah, know what it, uh, it was called that yet. Yes, exactly. Or don't listen to, yes, the trolls right. or whatever right, they right, call right. them. Uh, right. Because I had, I remember, uh, well, because my very first year, this is going to sound crazy, but I was visited by a central office employee. Well, not me personally, but we we're doing the first faculty meeting of the school year. I'm in a new school, new 22 year old Greg is in this building. And um, this lady comes up to me and says, hey, you look like a new teacher. I was like, yeah, I'm very new. I just started, blah, blah, blah. And she said, why are you here? I was like, well, I'm here because I believe I can make a difference in these kids' lives. Uh, right. I want to teach and I want to train them. I want, I, I want to help the Community grow and be better. And she was stared at me out for a minute and they said, Do you really believe that? And I was like, What? Uh, of course I do. <laughs> right. Yes, I, I want to change these kids' lives. And and, right. and it just blew me away that uh this person felt that way, um, uh, or would even question my belief in the fact that these kids. I, I wanted to change their lives. And I, I felt that I had the ability to change lives through my teaching. So I would, that's why I would tell myself that because there are haters out there. <laughs> the, the, you know, okay. So I actually, I, and if anyone knows who said this, cause I, it was a, it was an educator on Twitter. I just saw it today. It is not mine, but I do not know who it was. And I thought it was really powerful. Uh, they said that don't tell teachers to remember why they became teachers they know that remind them why they should stay and i think that like mm -hmm. like you think about that process right is that right away you knew you wanted to what you wanted to go into and then almost sometimes someone's like saying like putting you in a situation is like you know th this is not what i signed up for you're you want me to do something totally different and it's like yeah like i, I thought that was a i i wish i could remember who, like who said it was a it was an educator currently on Twitter said, I thought it was such a powerful notion is that we're like, oh, remember your why. And they're like, you, you are actually not, you are actually taking that away from me in many ways. Like you're taking that away. And I think part of it is, yeah, of course we want to, you know, stay central to our core, but we also have to be that, the, the people for others that actually, you know, remind them why they do what they do and, you know, be that experience. And that's actually... How I'm going to end this podcast because Greg, you are that person for so many people. I think, you know, for me, I've always had such amazing positive interactions with you. And I, I actually feel guilty for saying this, but like I, I should say this more. I actually see you interacting with other people. And when I watch you interact with other people, it really brings a light to me when I see how you interact, but I don't tell you that when I see it and I should, right. Cause I, oh. I think that, it's that interaction that you have because, you know, I know that you lift so many people up uh, in your work. And so I know that you really li live what you, you're saying right now. So um, everyone, if you don't know Greg, make sure you connect with him on Twitter and follow his work. He's absolutely incredible educator. Hamilton County School is very lucky to have you. Right. So I'm going to give Should I give Thank a little you. Hamilton County? Just Hamilton County. You got a gem and Greg, just so you know. Give a shout out. But uh, I hope you have a, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Greg, thanks for being on the podcast. I can't wait to talk to you more. Thanks, everyone, for thank listening. Thanks for having me.